y'all, Melissa here with you today, and this month is going to be all about sweatshirt hacks. I am wearing a variation on my free hoodie pattern that I have in another video, which I will link at the end and below. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make thumb hole cuffs instead of regular cuffs. And then next week I'll be showing you how to do this particular drawstring cowl that I am wearing. And then there'll be two more hacks later this month, so make sure you keep coming back to check out all of them. But for today, let's see how to make thumb hole cuffs. This can be done on any pattern that you can add knit cuffs to. So for example, today I'm wearing my Abrazo T pattern. Um, this can also be done with the free hoodie pattern that's on my channel. I'll put some links below to some ideas of patterns you can use to do this. So let's see how to sew these up. For supplies, first you're going to need cuff fabric. This needs to be knit and you want it to have pretty good stretch, definitely horizontally. I actually find these more comfortable if this also has some vertical stretch. So the sample fabric I have here is cotton spandex. And then you're going to need marking tools and your sewing machine. So this cuff here that I'm using, this is um, 6 inches wide by 10 inches tall. And that is stretchy enough with this particular type of fabric to go around my hand. Now, I have small hands, so I would suggest that you kind of check the stretch, like just fold your fabric and make sure that you can stretch it around the widest part of your hand um, before you decide on what your final width should be. 10 inches is a pretty good length. You might want to go 11 if you want the cuffs to come further onto your fingers or if you don't want them to go down so far onto your wrists. This is kind of personal preference here. So this size cuff that I'm wearing is exactly what this is cut. The next thing you have to decide when you've got your cuffs is, I kind of just placed my, fab my um, hand on the fabric and decided, so your cuff is going to get folded this way, okay? And I decided like where do I want my thumb and how wide of a cuff opening do I want for my thumb? Once you have kind of decided all of these, and again, I will tell you my measurements for this, you might want to vary them knowing that I have small hands. What I decided to do is um, I wanted my thumb hole to be one and a half inches wide, and then I wanted my cuff to be a finished measurement of um, four inches, so I had to do four double, which is eight, and then I had to add a seam allowance to each end. Okay, so um, actually, sorry, this finished one is four and a half, so doubled is nine, and then a seam allowance on each end is what got me to 10. So here's my 10 inch cuff, and I'm gonna use two different colors of marking pen to show you how to mark this to make the cuff thumb holes. So my thumb hole starts two inches up from my wrist, and then there's also that um, half inch um, seam allowance that was on there. So I'm just going to make a marking at the two inch mark here. And I want to do the same thing from the other end, come up two inches. And then, like I said, I wanted that thumb hole opening to be one and a half inches wide. That was a good measurement for the base of my thumb. So I'm going to go up one and a half inches and I'll make these purple marks. And I want to make sure that I have the same markings on both sides of my fabric. So I'm going to repeat that on this side. We'll do my two inch marks and then go up one and a half inches from each of those. As we sew these, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working from the centermost section out towards the raw edges of the cuffs. And let's talk a little bit about machine stitches to use for this. We want to use either a stretch stitch, which is what I'm going to use on my machine. It's the one that looks like a lightning bolt. If your machine doesn't have that, you're going to want to set it to a narrow zigzag stitch. Um, if you don't have that, or if you prefer, you might want to try a triple stitch. The reason I prefer this triple stitch or the lightning bolt stitch is because 
it doesn't show the stitching as much on the right side. It is as close to a straight stitch look as you can get from the seams without actually losing the ability to stretch. You can see my seam still stretches here on these sleeves I'm wearing. So I'm going to set my machine for that and then we're going to sew between the two purple dots with the fabric folded the way it is folded currently. So let's take this to the machine and you want to be really precise about where you're starting. I'm going to sew with a one quarter inch seam here and make sure I'm starting right next to that purple dot. And then I'm going to sew to the other purple dot that I made. Okay, once you've got that stitch in between those dots, then the next thing we need to do is, I want to show you how this is going to make the cuff. Okay, so you can see what we sewed actually was this part of the cuff right here. You see how that lines up? So going back to having this wrong side out, the next thing we want to stitch is the two little thumb areas. So we want this folded, if we put our seam up, we want it folded this way and we're going to be stitching these two seams together out here, but we want them right sides together. So the way I'm going to do that, I want to put these two kind of out of the way and then I'm going to fold this in half and I want to use a pin here because I'm really precisely matching up where I ended my stitching. And I also want to make sure that I'm not going to catch any of the fabric that we folded out of the way. And then I'm going to stitch from there right to the end of the cuff, or sorry, to the pink dot, not to the end of the cuff, just to the pink dot. That's the amount that's going to be right here. So what I'm stitching is this side and then I will stitch the other side. I like to put this in the machine and start at the stitching line and then really like take a second to line my needle up right with where I finished stitching previously and making sure not to catch those extra layers of fabric. And then I am stitching to that pink dot. Okay, so I've taken that out and it almost looks like one continuous line of stitching even though I did it in two sections. That's what you want. Then I need to fold this the other way and I'm trying to stitch those next two sections on the other side. So, kind of going to fold all of that out of the way. And then again, like make sure my pin is going right from the stitching to the stitching on the other side. Okay, and I am sewing from the stitching to the pink dot again. Make sure your edges are lined up. Alrighty, if I turn this right side out again and kind of push one into the other, you can see my cuff starting to form. So now I have this top section up here sewn, it's this part, and that's this part, and then I have sewn these two sections that go on the sides of my thumbs. Okay, so now all I have left to sew is these seams. So what I'm going to want to do is I want to take the outer cuff pieces and I'm going to sew these two right sides together and I want to do the same for the inner cuff pieces. It's easier to do this with the um, fabric when you turn it, the cuff back wrong side out. I'm just going to add a pin here because that's how I help myself remember like which cuff edges I'm sewing back together. Okay, so you can see it kind of looks, it almost looks like um, a little pair of like pants or something once it's wrong side out. Okay, but what I want to do now is I'm going to stitch and I want to match those edges right up from the stitching line again. So I'm going to go from this stitching line down to the bottom edge. And I'm making sure they're, oh, that one got off. I'm making sure they're matched up on both sides. So I want the last stitch to match up. There we go. 
Now I am not back stitching or anything when I'm doing this because this particular stitch kind of naturally locks itself, this lightning bolt stitch. If you're doing a zigzag, you may want to back stitch one stitch. Just make sure you don't go onto the extra fabric that you're not trying to sew right now. Okay, so we can see now on one side of the cuff, it looks almost like a continuous line of stitching here, even though I've done it in three parts. I want to do the same thing on the other side of the cuff here, where I am stitching these two ends together from the stitching to the lower end. Okay, so here is the other side of my stitching. And you'll see what it actually looks like when you've got it wrong side out, is it looks like the opposite of a thumb hole cuff. Like the hole is up here and down here instead of the hole being in the center. So here's where the magic happens. Go ahead and turn this right side out so that you've got one cuff folded into the other. And take a second and like match up these seams here. I like to open them flat when I'm matching them up. And there we go. You'll see how our hole has now appeared in the middle for your thumb. And we've got this folded cuff edge on top and we've got all the raw edges on the bottom of the cuff. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to sew this cuff on because I have another video that I'll link to where I show sewing on regular cuffs without thumb holes and it's the exact same process. But the basic idea is that you would put the cuff around your sleeve like this with all the raw edges this way and then you would stitch around that and then let me show you what it looks like on mine. So I used a serger but you can use any stretch stitch that you have and there you go you can see the cuff sewn on and then when it flips down you have your cuff with your thumb hole in that you can wear.